Now it's time to go over some combined events. What happens when we have different events happening and how do we deal with them? I'm going to show you a generic rule, but we're going to go into more detail. Okay, so we're actually going to go um, in just a few slides here. We're going to go over actually a lot more detail of these. So we're going to go through what it really means to do mutually exclusive and combined and independent. But as a general rule, at least, just a little trick to remember, I'm going to write this. I'm going to say probability of A. I'm going to write this little symbol right here. Okay, that's going to be equal to the probability of A and probability of B. So what this is, this is this little symbol right here. This is a really important power here is remembering what this little symbol right here. This means and. This is the key word here. Okay, so we've got these logical operators. This one here is called and. What this, a little trick for remembering it is, I think, you know, if you did a little circle thing like this, if you put a little thing like that, it looks like an A. So that's just how I remember that one's and. So and, in general, it means that you have to have probability of A and B occurring. And again, in general, but not always, we're going to see the exceptions there. You normally multiply. So I'm going to explain what I mean by that in a second here. So this is, like I said, kind of a trick to use here. So this is what I do with and. Okay, so with and, it means you multiply. Well, then we have something else, and that's called or. So I'm going to write it like this, the probability of A and it looks like a U like that, B. So that what that means is this is a probability of A or probability of B occurring. Okay, so that's why we use this keyword or. So this is or, that's the key thing here. Okay, or. And what do we do on average? We add. We add the terms. So if we have some probabilities, on average we add. Now, like I said, we're going to see that in more detail in a second, but just as a general rule, in case you see and, it usually means multiply. If you see or, it means add, but be careful. I'll show you the proper equations to use. But for right now, this is good enough. That's why I like this one now. I'm not sure how to use logical operators or that's a fact. It's supposed to be and, obviously. Uh, it's a Futurama one. All right, we have a box of candy. It contains three green uh, candies. We have four yellow, five blue ones, and you choose one from a box. Now, we're going to assume something really important here. We're going to be assuming that you cannot have, because you're only picking one thing, one candy cannot be both yellow and blue or green and yellow. In other words, we're going to assume something I'm going to define later called mutually exclusive. Then we can use this trick here. That's why I said these are dangerous tricks to know about because you actually have to use them properly. So I would say don't use these on their own. Use the proper equations I'm going to show you. But just to show you how you can deal with this. So what's the probability of picking a green one? Well, remember about probabilities. To do a generic probability, probability of green will be what's the number of greens over the total number? How many greens are there? There's three greens. How many in total are there to pick from? Well, there's five plus four, which is nine. Uh, plus 3, which is 12. So I got 3 over 12. Well, uh, that reduces. They both divide by 3. It gives me 1 over 4. So I could say that probability of green equals well, 0 0.25. Or I could say 1 over 4. They're both correct. Okay, so just say no. That's how I answered the first part. Great. Now, here comes a more interesting part. What's the probability of choosing a green or a yellow one? Now, you can't be both green and yellow, so this we can get away with this trick right here. You'll see later on why I define that. But uh, because it can't be green and yellow at the same time, right? it's only one piece, and they can't be green and yellow, they're either green or yellow, then this will work. So I want probability of, now I'll maybe use the same symbols here, so I'll say green. And what is or? Or is this U here, like this. Yeah, so that means, whoops, not B. What am I doing? That's yellow, I mean. So it looks like guy. So green or yellow. What does that mean? Remember, this is or here. Looks like guy. Uh, green or yellow. What does that mean? In general, when doing or, you add. So I'm going to say probability of green plus probability of yellow. Well, what's the probability of getting a green? We just found it. It's 1 over 4. Remember, we just found that. Actually, you know what? I'll make it over 12 just to things for now. So it's 3 over 12, as if you had to find it again, 3 over 12. How many yellows are there? Well, there's 4 yellows over 12. All right, we have a same denominator, so 3 plus 4 is 7. So our answer is 7 over 12. 
Now we could also write it as an approximate, I guess. So let's do that. I'll do a calculator here. Say what's seven divided by 12. But my calculator will just give me the fraction. So what you do, you do control this because you want to approximately equal to, and it's 0.583 to three significant figures. What does that mean? It means it's about 58% likely. So there we go. So now we figured that one out. So to see how in general we did it at least. Let's go into more details because, uh, well, that's a good idea to do. So now we got something called independent events. And I had an example about archery. That's what I was like, are you good at archery? Yes, no. <laughs> you didn't do it anywhere. So if we have one event has no effect on another event. This is the important thing here, okay? If two things are independent. Um, so that means one event occurring has no effect on another event occurring. Then we can say something like this. We can say probability of A. Remember what that symbol there means? This means and. Uh, and we can say it's equal to probability of A times probability of B. So remember I showed you before how I said when you do and, in general you would multiply, but not always. Here's when. You can only use this if they're independent. Because sometimes one event occurring affects the probability of another one. Then you can't, at least you have to be more careful. So this is, this is an equation you get on your formula booklet. That's the good news. So uh, maybe I'll do paste here because I think I wrote, yeah, formula booklet. There we go. So you get this, which is good. Um, and remember what this means, right? This means and. And this is only if they're independent can you do this, okay? So only if two events are independent, which means one does not affect the other, then you can use this. Here's an example. We're going to assume these two events are independent. So an archer hits a target two out of every five shots fired, and they fire three arrows in all. Here's the thing. We're going to assume, though, that if you miss one, you don't get like too upset and then miss the next one. Because in real life, that does happen sometimes. You know, the effect, uh, one thing affects the next thing. But let's assume that every shot has an equal probability. They're all about two out of five shots. So that person isn't very good at this, I guess. Uh, so they're probably like this. So what's the probability of a hit every time? Well, probability of a hit, let's say H will be equal to a hit, okay? And we'll say, uh, I guess, M will be a miss. Let's just do it that way. Well, what's the probability of a hit? Let's look at that. Well, the probability of a hit is how many hits are there? There's two hits out of five shots fired, so it'll be two out of five. Therefore, a probability of miss then must be, if you think about it, uh, it'll be three out of five. I'm just doing the math in my head because I know that two out of five plus three out of five is the way to get to five out of five. So these are the generic things I'm going to use. So what's the probability of a hit every time? That means probability of hit and hit and hit. See, I'm doing three hits, hit, hit, hit. So what do I do with and, assuming they're independent? Hey, look, I can just multiply them. So it's just a probability of hit times the probability of hit times the probability of hit. In other words, it's going to be 2 over 5, because that's the probability of a hit, right? It's going to be 2 over 5 times 2 over 5 times 2 over 5. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 5 times 5 is 25. Times 5 is 125. Divide that, oh, what's that, 0.064, I think? Let's just do it on a calculator to be sure. 8 over 125. And I say thanks. Give me the, whoops. Give me the approximate. Oh, 0 0.064, yeah. All right, so pro oh, no, exactly equal to 0 0.064. So both of these are correct. So, all right, that's the probability of hit, hit, hit. What's the probability of hitting the first two, then missing the third? So this would be something that looks like probability of hit, and then a hit, and then a miss. If you get my meaning, we go like this. Well, it's going to be the probability of hit. Because they're independent, I can just multiply them. I'm just writing it all down. When you've done a lot of these, you'll skip a lot of these steps. But I'm just trying to show you how to do it. Well, it'll be 2 over 5 times 2 over 5 times 3 over 5. So what will that be? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So it'll be 12 over 125, which is, let's do that on my calculator, 12 over 125. And I'll st save a step and say, give me the approximate, 0 0.096. 0 0.096. So there's 
that probability. So do you see, we can start doing more interesting things by looking at hitting and missing and whatever. Keep in mind, I've said a, I've specified them, because if you don't specify, it gets a lot more interesting. If you're HL, you'll do work with that a lot more. But uh, for right now, I've specified them to make them simpler. All right, mutually exclusive. What does it mean to be mutually exclusive? Well, it means mm, there's no intersection. In other words, the probability of A and B happening is zero. That's really what it means. So this is sort of a, a, a good generic thing here. If you're mutually exclusive, I always just think of it this way. Now, you don't get this on your formula booklet. You do get an equation, though, for mutually exclusive events. And it just says that the probability of A and B happening is going to be just the probability of A plus the probability of B. In other words, here we're getting that special case where I was saying at the very beginning how in some cases, remember in some cases, uh, and means you multiply, but I'm going to write that down now and say only, maybe I'll add to it right here. Actually, I'll say only, remember now we learned something about it, right? Only if uh, these are independent. Okay, and this one right here I can say only if mutually exclusive. Okay, so that's where we're going to really define them. Because if they're mutually exclusive, then you can say we can add these things. So that's where we are now. We're sitting here now where we're adding things. So there we go. This, by the way, is also on your formula booklet. So that's nice. So we can say that the probability of A or B happening, remember this means or, or means add in general. But that's only if they're mutually exclusive, only if the probability of A and B happening is zero. Just like that example I gave you with the uh, green or yellow here, you can't be green and yellow at the same time. You're only choosing one. So that's why we could use this. But you got to be careful. If you don't know that things are independent, if you don't know that things are mutually exclusive, then you got to use this generic combined events equation. This is the, the one that works no matter what. So this one right here says that probability of A or B is going to be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. However, we have to subtract from it probability of A and B together. This is a generic equation. This works if you're not sure what to do, use this. This is the really important one, okay? Um, I consider this like the, the one that runs everything. So this is the one, if you really don't know what to do, do this. But what if I made them mutually exclusive? I'm just trying to show you what we can do here. If I made them mutually exclusive, I'll call it ME, mutually exclusive, what does that mean? I just taught you mutually exclusive means probability of A and B equals zero. So watch, if I made the probability of A and B equals zero, what would that do? That would mean then that this equation right here, do you notice this piece right here would cancel out? So then I would have probability of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B. So I'm back to that mutually exclusive equation. Look, for mutually exclusive, that's why this happens. I'm surprised they gave you this equation. You didn't really need it. As long as you knew mutually exclusive means the probability of the two things occurring is zero, you wouldn't even need this one. So I thought that was actually pretty handy that they, they gave you that one. See, we get back to the mutual exclusive one. All right, let's take a look at this then. This is a proper example of what to do here. So we're told that probability of A is 0.3. We're told probability of B is 0.8. And we're told the probability of A or B happening is 0.4. We're not told if these things are mutually exclusive or if they're independent. We don't know this. See, a lot of students make that mistake. If you're not told or if you don't have information to tell you that, then you can't assume it. That's why you have to use this equation. Then. So I'm going to use it. I'm just going to use that equation right there and say, well, I know the probability of A or B occurring is a probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. I'm just writing that equation. All right, now let's start filling in what we know. Do we know any of these things? Well, I know probability of A is 0.3, so I know this will be 0.3. I know probability of B is 0.8. What else do I know? I know the probability of A or B is 0.4. Which one is that? Is that this one or is it this one? Well, or is this weird U one. So that is this one. That's the important thing. So that was this one. Well, then I have minus probability of A and B. And what are we asking for? That's actually what we want. Do you notice? 
So I can just keep writing this. Uh, I can keep going and say, all right, that means 0 0.4 will equal, let's see, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.3 is going to be 1.1. So minus probability of A and B. I can move my probability of A and B on the left side. That means I'll move this, uh, I'll move this 0.4 to the right. So I'll say 1.1 minus 0 0.4. Well, that means then that probability of A and B occurring must be, let's see, 1.1 minus 0 0.4, or is that 0.7? There we go. You've got this. So these equations and working with these are really, really important that you get a feeling for these, okay? These take practice, so do practice lots of these kind of questions, but this is the one to use when you're really not sure what to do. Use this equation right here. And don't forget, mutually exclusive means the probability of them occurring together is zero. Independent means one does not affect the other. That's the key word here. Maybe I'll put that in some purple here just to say this is an important piece of information here. Independent, we could say, ah, oh, well, mutually exclusive was that one. That was good. And then uh, in general, and means multiply or means add. There you go.